I just want to inshallah ta'ala give a quick advice bi idhnillah al kareem um this knowledge this ilm it took scholars many years of their life 10 15 20 30 some of them they died and they were still carrying the ink and the log in which they were writing the narrations in Al Imam Al Shafi'i he said Akhi lan tanal al ilma illa bi sittatin saunbika an tafsilha bi bayani zaka'un wa hirsun wa ijtihad wa bulghat wa suhbat ustaz wa tul zaman Al Imam Al Shafi'i he said My brother you're not going to gain knowledge unless you come with six things My brother you will not let gain knowledge unless you come with six things. The first one he said, أَخِي لَن تَنَالَ الْعِلْمَ إِلَّا بِسِتَّةٍ سَأُمْبِيكَ عَنْ تَفْصِيلِهَا بِبَيَانِ I will explain it to you in details. Zaka, You have to be a very smart person. Do you know a smart person? A smart person is the one who works towards that which will benefit them. That's a very smart person. And the zaka, it's two types. The scholars mention it. Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned it in his kitab. Um, and he also mentioned it in his bayanu ta'sis. The first one is jibilli. Allah naturally gives you a smart mind. You're just a clever person. That's just natural. You didn't work for it. The second type is muktasab. Muktasab means you work for it. And Ibn Hibban al Busti also mentioned in his kitab, Rawdatul Uqala, that the one which is muktasab is the one that the person works towards. The masalih dunya with deen. The person you see them, they either going work making money, or they're working towards their akhirah. That's a smart person. He doesn't waste his time with what won't benefit him. He will not sit around talk to people who doesn't benefit him. The kaun, that's the first one. Wahirsun, brothers working hard. This knowledge, it needs hirs, it needs hard work. No one gains this knowledge to the second thing. You won't gain knowledge if you don't work hard for it. Wallahi, you won't. The only person who Allah gave him knowledge without him, him having to work for it is Nabi Muhammad. Anyone other than him will have to work for this knowledge. I was reading the biography of Jalaluddin al-Suyuti. Suyuti said, I studied the Arabic language only by itself from my teacher al-Kafiji 11 years taqriban. Just Arabic. This man or any other scholar like that cannot become something overnight or two, three weeks or four months. It has to be a person who takes away from his sleep, who takes away from the times he wanted to enjoy. A man came to Imam Shafi'i and he said to him, I want to become a scholar of hadith. I want to become a scholar of hadith. And Imam Shafi'i he said to him, I give you the glad tidings of poverty that will never leave you. Because it can't happen that hadith and living a lavish life, a, gl- a, a glamorous life cannot combine. Knowledge cannot be attained with a relaxed body. You can't sleep eight hours, eat three course meal, you know, have what you want in life, and then turn out to be a scholar like that. It will somehow affect you. Hirsun. And another riwayah says, Waftiqar. And I like this one. Shafi'i said iftiqar. Iftiqar is the person is hungry for knowledge. 
really hungry. He really wants it. It's become an addiction for him. If you read the biography of the great scholars, they used to sell their children's pots and pans. They'll come home and they will send, sell the pots and they will sell the pans. For what reason? So they can travel somewhere and they can hear one or two hadiths. They will sell their children's food so they can travel to a scholar so they can take hadith from him. Your hunger for knowledge has to be very deep. It has to be very strong. How many points did we mention? It's an Ghurba means what? Another riwayah copy says Ghurba, you become strange. A student of knowledge will become strange. Loneliness will come to you because you're going to leave your land, you're going to leave your people, you're going to leave what you once upon a time knew, and you're going to come to a land that you don't know, a people you don't know, in a situation that you're not aware of. You become gharib. You also even become gharib amongst the people. They see you crazy all the time you're carrying a book on the streets. But I saw some students who when they would memorize, they would be crossing the road and cars would... When you look at them, you think this person is not... Are they sane? It's become very deep for them. Gharib. The student of knowledge becomes gharib, strange. The fifth... Is it the fifth or the fourth? The fifth is Talqeen Ustadin. You have a teacher who monitors you, who guides you, who tells you what it, what it is that you need to do and what is it that you need to stay away from. The scholar Ahmad the Shaykh is a person who went before you and now it's te- he's telling you the mistakes that he fell into. And he's going to tell you, don't take that path. I took it and it wasted one or two years of my life. Don't let it waste your time. Take that path. The teacher, he shortens for you the road. Without a teacher, you won't really gain good knowledge. You can read as much volumes as you like, but if you do not have a teacher who's who monitors you, who advises you, you won't gain knowledge. Last but not least is Watul as a man. Long time. The sixth one is knowledge is a long thing. You may not see the effects that these class have for you today or tomorrow. You may not see it. But I can reassure you, if you carry on for a long time and you don't give up and you're consistent, you'll see it. I just came back from Egypt yesterday. And when I came back, Egypt has memories. 13 years ago, I used to be there. And this journey for me was different from the previous journeys. It really had effect on me because... I saw the place I used to be when I was young. Ala kulli hal, a thought came to my mind. I tried to remember the people who took this path with me many years back to seek knowledge. And it's sad to say, I couldn't remember one person who still is consistent upon seeking knowledge and learning. Everyone I remember who took this path with me, who was learning, Every one of them, I don't. Either they died or they are no longer into this field of seeking knowledge. The reason is because the road seemed very long to them. And they thought, I studied and I learned, and that's enough. Knowledge is going to take your life, it's going to take your money, it's going to take everything. Give it, give it everything. Is it fair that Allah's religion is little in your eyes and the dunya is a lot? 
Is it fair that you know how to make money but you do not know how to increase your righteous deeds? Is it fair that you decorate this dunya, the house that you're living in, and you decorate it with beautiful things, but your grave that you're going to go into, you haven't decorated it with righteous deeds? Is that fair? Is it fair that you haven't thought about the day that you meet Allah Azza wa Jalla and you come in front of Him, the two things that would have helped you, beneficial knowledge and righteous actions, those are the two. You haven't increased in it. Brothers, the last thing I want to say is to gain knowledge and to be given the chance to learn, it's a privilege. It's an honor Allah gives to whoever He wishes. And Imam al tufiyu he said, when it came to the ayah, Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. The way Allah chooses the prophets. And He doesn't give this message to everybody. Allah selected who He wants the prophets to be. The people of knowledge are also selected. They are? They're chosen. Not everybody can be a scholar. And it's a sign that Allah loves you when He allows you to seek knowledge. May you read Allahu bihi khayran, you faqihu fi deen. If Allah wants good for you, He makes you understand His religion. Some of you might think that this path is hard, it's long, I can't give it everything. I can reassure you if you do not endure the hardship of seeking knowledge, you will endure the humiliation of ignorance. If you do not endure the patience of seeking knowledge, you will endure the humiliation of ignorance. Either way, you're going to suffer both ways. It's better to suffer in gaining knowledge than enduring humiliation. Anything which I have said that was wrong, or incorrect is from me, shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh.